It's a Tuesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. If you join us for the first time, welcome to the family. You're tuned in to the only daily property show in South Africa, catering to your property needs. And it doesn't matter where you are on your property journey. We're certainly here to make sure that you have a better uh, journey up ahead. And to all our regular viewers on Facebook and Instagram, on YouTube, welcome to it. You know how we do every single weekday. You and I have an appointment at 7 o'clock where I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us make better property decisions and talking about making better property decisions you can of course catch our other great shows across private properties social media platforms every single weekday at 8 p.m as it's a tuesday you can catch on by lino go on the farming podcast tackling all things agriculture and she's on your screens every thursday at the same time and every mondays and fridays is Chad brings you the Home Shoppers Show, where he takes you through exquisite properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. And of course, every Wednesday, Esther Carson brings you the first time home by a show where she's always in conversation with people who've not only walked that first time home buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. Well, those are the great shows that you can look forward to every single weekday right here across private parties, social media pages on when on, on at 8 p.m. rather. And of course, the other thing that you can uh, look forward to is the, uh, the competition that we're running on our Facebook page. And I see that uh, we might be having some tip gremlins uh, in the system. Don't worry, uh, we're about to be on and we're certainly going to be live across our social media platforms. The team is aware of this and will be coming to you shortly. But talking about that competition, of course, it's a great competition that we're running across our social media pages. And um, all you have to do there to stand a chance of walking away with that uh, cash prize where it's we give away 500 rands in cash every single weekday is of course to make sure that you uh, comment on the pinned post on our Facebook page and you send a chance of walking away with that cash prize. I'm going to check in with my colleague um, and I can see that we're now on across our platforms and we are certainly coming to do a apologize for those glitches but we are certainly slowly coming on across the different platforms well the 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 money bag is back at 500 rands in our competition uh, yesterday we had our lucky winner Pauline Nkosi uh, winning that uh, 4,000 rands that was in the money bag I know that we are broadcasting on YouTube so you're watching us on YouTube you can certainly get us it is the other platforms of Facebook as well as Instagram where uh, there's minor glitches but the show always continues right here on private property uh, and of course on the private property podcast with myself Uzaman Duma Milo. Well to kick start our conversation this evening we're talking changing your marital property regime. I'm joined by Kathleen Zebu, the director at Mulefe Zebu Incorporated. Kathleen good evening and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, good evening Zama and thank you for inviting me and good evening to your listeners and your, your audience. Um, and, and I think, Kathleen, before we even look at, you know, what happens when you change, uh, things that you should be watching out for, what, when we talk about your marital property regime, what exactly is it that we are talking about? 
a marital property re, marital property regime is it's a, a principle of how you get married and it's regulated by the matrimonial property act of 88 of 1984 there were different uh, property regime before 1984 but the 1984 act actually tried to to conceptualize the marital regime in in a sequence you know there are different types of marital regimes. As you know, marriage is an agreement between two people and uh, you have to discuss how you want to get married because it affects your cons the consequences and your uh, consequences of your property and how everything about you changes once you get married. Mm. And, and, and I think let's look at the different types of property regimes then that we uh, effectively get, uh, Kathleen. Okay, we, we, we've got the, the, the original marriage in community of property when both parties marry in community of property and they jointly own everything that they acquire. Then there's a marriage out of community of property with the uh, application of the accrual system where you can, it's an out of community of property, but you, own, you jointly own what you acquired after the marriage. But then there's a marriage out of community of property, we call it out and out, where yours is yours, mine is mine. But with a marriage out of community of property, you have to sign a contract, which is an anti natural contract, and regulate the relationship of your marriage, how you want it to be regulated. So you have to sign that contract just before you get married, and it has to be registered before a notary. And because once you get you marry without signing that contract, that means you are married in community of property. And, and I think I, I want to pick up on that, Kathleen, because I think we, we often find so many people uh, tend to not be aware that you need to sign it before uh, you effectively get married. It's not something that you can kind of you know, wake up two weeks after the, 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 the wedding day or even the following day and, and say that, you want to you know quickly sign it uh if anything that process is you know is a whole process on its own when you look at the contract that you you're going to sign um you know that anti laptop contract perhaps give us you know a few pointers on what you should be looking out for uh, when you're now talking to your partner about the anti laptop contract that uh, both of you are looking to to sign okay the the, the anti nuptial contract both uh, as you know that uh, so uh, now, you know, parties, uh, before they get married, they come from somewhere. They've acquired properties from wherever they come from. So some of them they've inherited, some of them just donated. So an anti natural contract specifies what actually are you going to share if you get married and what you don't want to share, what is yours and not uh, it is his. So it, it's a, we call it, a, it, it, it's definitely a contract. But you can't get, enter into it after the marriage until, unless if you apply to court. It has to, even if you enter it, into it in the morning at 7, then you are getting married at 10. But the intimidation contract will actually state that it was signed at 7 on such and such a day. And then you are getting married at 10. You know? So it actually regulates all the consequences of the marriage. And what is will form part of, of a joint property or not. Mm -hmm. I am this evening in conversation with Kathleen Zebu, the director at Maleficent Zebu Incorporated. We're looking at changing your marital property regime, uh, whether you're married in community of property uh, or, of course, married out of community of property. You've signed an anti nuptial contract, uh, whether you're looking at accrual or not having the accrual system. Uh, looking at the ins and outs and, of course, how it affects you, uh, especially when you have you know, things like actual property at stake and, of course, other assets or even children uh, who are part of the equation. I want to find out from you, uh, I mean, when, when you look at your marital contract, were you even aware of the different kinds of marital contracts that were available you know, before you entered into your, your marriage, you know, that many people tend to, uh, you know, almost automatically find themselves being married in community of property. They weren't aware that there are different ways that you could uh, enter into the institution of marriage. Uh, were you aware? What were some of the, you know, pointers that you learned along the way? Uh, perhaps if you have an antenatural contract in place, what were some of the things that were very important for you 
uh, to be included in that contract. Now, Kathleen, when we look at the antenatural contract, I think what are some of the mistakes that uh, parties make when it comes to that antenatural contract? And, 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 and I want us to even look at Black people in particular, because I think sometimes when we look at um, you know, the antenatural contract, people often think, oh, you know, I'm tembi, uh, you know, do you think, uh, you know, I don't love you, uh, and when they want to justify whether or not we shouldn't be signing uh, an antenatural contract, when in effect, we really are protecting um, the family's assets. It's not even about individual trust, but it really is about best protecting the family and the family's assets. What are some common mistakes that we sometimes make when it comes to um, antenatural contracts? I think Zama, the, the, the common mistake, before I go to the common mistake, I should, uh, I must mention that there's another, a customary marriage, you know, especially when um, uh, uh, you enter into a customary marriage, there is an, a contract also, if you want to protect the proprietary consequences, maybe you've got two wives, uh, you can sign that contract, but it has to be registered at the, at the same time. But one of the common mistakes that we do, we, we tend to believe that when you are married out of community of property, you don't love each other, you know? And the, 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 the contract actually get, regulates your proprietary consequences when you divorce or when you die, you know? Because that's basically where the problems start on the time of divorce. Mm -hmm. So if I me having my family house, then Mr. comes into the, uh, uh, my space, then when, if we did not sign that contract, we have to share that family house, only to find we have other siblings, and now the other siblings are out, outside of the whole uh, equation. So it's always important to say, to, to put pen to paper and say, this is my family house, I inherited it from my parents, let me protect it by in a contract, saying that you found me with this con uh, family house, it does not form part and parcel of the marriage. Mm. So those, those, especially in movable property, especially with, with our, uh, our communities, the, the family houses become such a, a sad issue when divorces occur, on death uh, occurs, because some of the people are being changed because you didn't indicate that it is a family house. Mm. And, and I think, you know, when, when we think about the politics of the family house, even outside of marriage, just within the, you know, the siblings or the grandchildren who are supposed to uh, essentially share the family home, we already have so much drama and uh, it, it gets highly contested. I can only imagine then the dynamic that it adds in if you're one of the, the heirs to that family, uh, you know, family home, and then you get married and it's not adequately stipulated that this is actually won't form part of uh, you know what you go into a marriage with. I want us to go for a quick break, find out who the lucky winner of the competition that we're running on Facebook. I already know that on Facebook we're having a few issues. Uh, unfortunately, it's a Facebook issue. The team has been trying to get us on Facebook, but we are, of course, coming to you across our other uh, social media platforms. So we do apologize for that. Uh, and uh, course, during after we come back from this break, I'll also read through some of the incredible entries that we also received from some of you at home who posted there on the Facebook page. But in the meantime, let's see who the lucky winner of that 500 rands in cash is. And that lucky winner is Unduduzo, Clint Unduduzo, Clint, the lucky winner of the 500 rands that is in the money bag. Remember, you have to drop us a comment uh, you know, below. And if anything, I'd even say slide into our DMs because I know that we are having a few uh, issues with our Facebook page. Uh, and of course, do get in touch with us in order to claim that Prize. As we continue the conversation with Kathleen Glebu, the director at Mulefit Glebu Incorporated, looking at changing your marital property regime. Now, Kathleen, I think we, we've looked at some of the you know, mistakes that people 
also, you know, people often make with international contracts. What are the mistakes that people make when they enter into, um, you know, marriages in community of property? Because I think that that one is so common. We already know some of the drama that, you know, sometimes tends to come up. But what are some of those common mistakes, uh, certainly that attorneys end up having to uh, deal with because of the mistakes that the two parties who've entered into that agreement have made? Okay, at the same time, the, 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 marriage, uh, the anti-natural contracts uh, get signed, uh, 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 executed before a notary. So the notary has to explain in detail to say, who, what do you want? It's, it's your decision what needs to be in that contract. So if you, uh, you don't put everything in, maybe you're afraid of the other party. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a problem. But whatever goes into that paper is what both parties wish to be in that paper. The notary will actually explain what needs to be in that document, but it's up to the parties if they really put it in. Mm-hmm. And I think, Kathleen, then when we look at changing, so you start when you got married, you got married in the community of property, perhaps you weren't. Uh, so clear about you know the different kinds of ways that one could get married, uh, and you've now certainly gotten slightly more clued up about the implications of let's say being married in community of property and the potential threat to the family's assets. When you then want to you know change the the the, the marital status to uh, to to have that contract in place where you're now no longer married in community of property, um, what are the active steps that you need to to be taking? Lama, any change in the marital status, you have to go to court. You go to court and apply to for the status of the marriage to be changed. And a lot of them is changing from in community of property to out of community of property with accrual. Basically, it happens because when you get married, sometimes you get married when you are still young and you, you tend to become a business person, you know? So you are trying to protect the other party from the, 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 the obligations of the business and everything that will ha- go wrong in that business so that whatever happens, if they have to declare you insolvent, it must be you alone and not affect the other party. And if they are creditors, it must be you alone and not affect the other party. So, but before you, you have to go to court, we call it a section 21 application. So it's an application, it's an ex parte, you know, application. Firstly, you have to indicate to court, why do you want to change their marital system? Normally, as I say, a business person, you have decided that you want to go into business, you don't want it to be affected. But if the property is bonded, you have to inform all the creditors. Once you have to inform the creditors because the court will want to see that the creditors have consented to your changing of the marriage, right? And the reason is why for that is that they don't want the creditors to be prejudiced. You may find you change the marriage system, you can't even afford to pay that bond when you are alone, you know. So the creditors need to know and, and sign consent forms to say, we consent to the change of the marriage. We, do, are, not, we are not going to be prejudiced uh, in, in the changing of the marriage. And when you, uh, in that application, you must attach the draft of what you intend doing, the, in, the intended anti nuptial contract. The court will want to see that you are entering into a contract which is not is, is proper. There are those contracts we can't say to a person enter into a contract. I can only uh, marry you if you bear me children and all those things. Those things which are against the law. Uh, we call them contra bonus mores in in law. So the court will want to see what you are going to intend doing. So once the court has given you that court order you can go and reg- uh, uh, to, uh, register that contract, then the marriages change. So the court order and the, con- uh, the contract are attached jointly. And uh, the deed office has to be notified of that. You serve that change. In, uh, because remember, when you are married, if you have property, the deed office has record of your, uh, your immovable property as married in committee of property. So if you want to change, you have to serve on the, share, uh, on, on the deed office also. 
to say that I'm changing my marriage so that they can amend their the record. Mm. Um, and we are in conversation this evening with Captain Zebu, Director at Mulefu Zebu Incorporated, taking your questions and comments uh, this evening. We've got on our Facebook, on our YouTube page, rather, uh, Teatu Munyai saying, if I'm married in a community of property with someone who has children and their partner died, am I obliged to take care of those children according to the contract? So, uh, you know, the partner dies, you're, you're married to this person in a community of property, they have children. And in the event where perhaps then the person that you're married to also passes away, are you now obligated to be the, the, the guardian of those children? Depends on what you agreed upon. If you adopted those children as yours, you are obliged. Because they are your children. Once they are adopted, once they change into your surname, you are obliged to do that. But it, the minor children, obviously, if the, the other spouse dies, the, the children will inherit a portion of that, their mother or their dad who, who died. So you've got half of the property and they'll inherit, inherit from the share of their mother or the, the, the dead, whoever has passed on. But once you have adopted them, then you are obliged to do that. Mm -mm -mm. And I think then, Kathleen, when we look at um, the change of the marital property regime in the, in the instance where people get divorced, um, and, and obviously now, you know, assets need to be, you know, split, um, or people have to go their, you know, their separate ways, depending on how people are married, how does that process typically work? Uh, and we can start with in the event where people are married in community of property uh, and are now you know, going through a divorce and then move on to when people um, had signed an anti natural contract and are now in the process of getting a divorce. When married, people are married in community of property, then they get divorced. They either do two things, to enter into a, settle, a settlement agreement to say who takes what out of the marriage. But if they don't enter into a settlement agreement, then you have to go, go, to, you have to, pay, to, go to court to apply for a receiver and liquidator, somebody who will take charge of your property and divide the property for you, right? Which is the most expensive one. I always encourage couples to go and enter into an agreement and specify. But even if they have entered into an agreement, sometimes things don't go the way they want. So you still have to go to court and appoint a person called a receiver, an independent person called a receiver and liquidator who will take charge and distribute on your behalf. But when you are married out of community of property, the ANC, the intellectual contract is your guide. If it's with accrual, Obviously, you check at the commencement value. If I'm married to Zama or somebody is married to Zama, Zama had a, a, a 40,000. 40, the other one at the commencement of marriage had 100,000. But when we divorce, Zama has 50,000 and the other one has a million. We have to equalize on the accrual. But what you had excluded, obviously, it will be excluded. But when we are married out of community of property, what we call out and out, you you keep what you have in terms of the contract. Mm. Uh, we've got to Martha Shingai saying I don't on our on our uh, YouTube page there saying I don't want to lose this question. Please allow me to ask now. So can we change the regime just before getting divorced? Not asking for a friend. Uh, so in the event where um, and, and 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 I hope I'm understanding it clearly, Martha. So before you actually get divorced, suppose you are married in community of property and now you want to uh, uh, perhaps you know change the nature of the of the marriage um, before perhaps at some point getting divorced. Is that something that would be uh, possible, Kathleen? I, I, do not, I, I don't think you get married with the intention of getting divorced. Right? But if you feel <laughs> that the, the partner is not uh, uh, in control of the matrimonial uh, uh, property, well, you can apply to court. But I think it will be ingenious of you to say, I'm changing now, but the following year I'm divorcing. That, that's very ingenious. But if you agree to do that, there's, nobody, there's nothing that prevents you. Mm -mm -mm. And then uh, I think, you know, Kathleen, 
divorces, and we're even saying of it, divorce, I think is such an unpleasant experience to, to go through. Uh, and, and it's only one of those experiences that I know anybody who's even gone through it, attorneys who deal with divorces wouldn't wish it on anybody. But what are some common mistakes that people make in the, when, when they're in the process of now divorcing when it comes to the splitting of particularly the assets um, and even perhaps the, the liabilities, so just common mistakes that sometimes even, you know, drag up the, the divorce longer than it uh, potentially it should, or even end up costing, um, you know, either parties more money than it probably should have. The common mistake is that you, you haven't entered into a contract on how to regulate your marriage. The, but the problem is, you know, divorces take the, the worst out of people, you know? They, they, you suddenly hate the party who's next to you and you have been staying with that person for, for almost 20 years. For me, it's so, uh, it's so unfortunate and uncalled for, and especially when they are children. So as attorneys, we normally try and make them see the, that they, they don't, the divorce won't only affect them. It will affect even the children. So however, and I try and encourage them to come to a settlement which it will benefit both parties. That's why I spoke about mediation sometimes to say mediation is a win-win situation, you know. But unfortunately, people who do, sometimes want to get divorced, they want to spite the other one. You mm-hmm. can't get anything what I've worked for. But having forgotten that you stayed with this person for the past 20 years, even if that person is not working, she has contributed to the marriage. Mm-hmm. I see Martha Shanae saying clearly articulated. Thank you, Zama. So we definitely did get the right gist of what she was asking us. You, you, you don't want to change the nature of your, your marriage knowing very well that you're going to divorce uh, or you're going to institute divorce proceedings uh, in the next few months. Uh, I think that's definitely something that somebody wouldn't want to do. We've got Polina Nkosi saying, I'm afraid of marrying in community of property because all his debts will affect my credit score. Anyway, I envy those brave souls who go that route. I think, you know, Kathleen, what are the perks, if any, of getting involved, uh, of getting married in community of property? Because I know that that's that's a very big fear that uh, we, we tend to have. So many people have stories of, you know, relatives who are married that way and ended up losing up quite a bit. When we look at the, the different kinds of, um, you know, marriage contracts that one could have, are there any benefits of getting married in community of property? Uh, from my personal view, uh, because there is an anti-marriage out of community of property with accrual, I, I really advise my client to do that. Because marriage mm-hmm. in community of property, I, the, the experiences that I've had, when things are bad, it becomes very sour. So you'd rather go into an anti contract and say, we will share what we, achieve, we, we, we get, when, uh, we, we have achieved together. You know, and this is how we are going to share it. Because in an up to natural contract, you can even do donations, you can do anything because it's a contract. But I, but in community of property for me, I think things are changing. You know, things are changing. You find young women self-sustained and even young men having inherited. So I'd rather go for a marriage in community of property, out of community of property with accrual system. Say that from the date we sign, if we have signed on the 23rd, then we start sharing from that date. But remember, this is meant for the day when things are bad, when you are divorcing or when you die. You know, it's not like it, 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 it happens whilst you are still happy. There's nothing wrong with any community of property if you love each other and, and trust each other. I don't have a problem, but for me, it's a better bet to marry out of community of property with a cruel system. Mm. And, and because each party have... understands what they want, you know, yeah. yeah. And they are genuine, they understand, and they trust each other. And Kathleen, as we wrap up our conversation, uh, you know, any final tips for our viewers at home when it comes to, you know, changing the, the status of your, of your, you know, marriage? Uh, any tips that they should uh, keep in mind in the event where they're already married or certainly for those at home who may want to get married in the future? I, I think for me, before you get married, try and, and source advice, you know? Mm-hmm. Because before, I, I'll advise you the types of marriages that you can enter into, so that you, by the time you get married, you'll be very well informed. There's no harm in doing that. 
go, to, go and consult an attorney or a social worker or anybody to say what type of marriages are out there, you know? So before, because sometimes even us when we're young, we just got excited and got married in community of property. You only discover when you want to be a business person to say, wow, that was a mistake, you know? So then, and to change a marital system is quite expensive because we have to go to court and pay an attorney, you know, to do that. Mm-hmm. And advertise in the newspaper that we are changing our marital system. Yeah. And I guess, Kathy, that's why we sometimes see people divorcing uh, and then remarrying is that some of the some sometimes the reason why uh, you know some people opt to to rather divorce even though they they know that they're actually going to remarry and this time around uh, sign that anti nuptial contract and stipulate where things should be going and how they should be going. Yes, I've I've seen people doing that, but it's quite risky <laughs> because once you're divorced, if the other party doesn't want to remarry, then you are in problems. <laughs> and, I mean, so, that, that, that would be the, the worst thing. Sitting down one evening, saying, "Okay, we're going." So to you'd rather start. Yeah, I think. It, <laughs> then it, says, it, "I'm not." That, that would be the worst. I think that would actually be the worst when a party then decides, "No, actually, it's fine. We don't need to do that uh, again." Kathleen, we're going to leave it there this evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's always such a pleasure to have you with us. Oh, thank you, and thank you to our listeners. Thank you, Zama. Thanks. And that is Kathleen Lepu, who is a director at Mulefe Lepu uh, Incorporated, uh, talking about changing your marital property regime right here on the Private Property Podcast with myself, Zama Dungwa Kumalo. Well, we have a rollover this evening. Uh, so tomorrow evening, you can expect 1,000 rands in the money bag. Uh, and we do apologize there for those technical glitches in the beginning end of the show. But the show always continues and we're always going to make sure that we give you a daily dose of all things relating to property. Well, that's it for myself, Zamanto Wakumala, and the rest of the team. We're going to be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. But do stay tuned for the farming podcast coming up at 8 with Umbali Moko. Until then, hoping you're staying home and staying safe.